schooling fish, a mesmerizing, undulating mass of sleek bodies that bends, breaks, and becomes again. This collective movement is dazzling, but also puzzling. A clear understanding of how and why it happens has been hard to come by, but we're slowly unraveling the mystery behind it all. Many fish throughout the world school at some point in their lives, if not their whole lives. We think this synchronized swimming is at least partly driven by genes that coax fish into groups and affect how well they swim next to their neighbors. Whether it's written in their DNA or something fish learn along the way, schooling has lots of advantages. With all of those eyes, Groups of fish have an easier time finding food than solo swimmers, and swimming is less exhausting when fish can draft off their neighbors. Group swims also provide easier access to potential mates and safety in numbers. Schooling fish can confuse predators and mask the signals of individual fish. More fish also means more watchful eyes and better odds of surviving an attack. But just like your high school science class, not all seats in a school are created equal. Sitting up front can be dangerous. Most predators target these keeners, but they often have better access to food and oxygen-rich water than those in the back. Fish around the edges tend to be in worse shape with weaker skills and more health issues than those in the middle of the pack. But being on the outside also means being closer to food, so no single spot wins out. Once all the fish in a school settle into their positions, how do they shift in unison? Fish watch their neighbors for changes in direction or speed and react to keep their place. Other cues come from a series of small sensory organs called the lateral line that can detect subtle vibrations and pressure changes in the water when other fish speed up or turn. We think individuals self-organize by following simple rules like stay close but not too close to your neighbor. When everyone follows the rules, the result is synchronized swimming. Like humans, though, fish have personalities, and these seem to affect how a school moves. Some fish, mostly the front runners in a school, tend to consistently react first to a predator's strike, and then the rest take their cue and follow suit. So schools of fish might in fact have leaders of a sort who steer the group away from predators. Time and more research will tell. Despite all that we've learned, there's still so much we don't understand about schooling fish, or swarming birds, herds of animals, or even the collective movement of humans. Studying each of these group behaviors can help us understand the others, allowing us to hone in on how they work and why we do them. And in the meantime, they'll continue to captivate and mesmerize.